I'd like to ask you about the government shutdown, and I, I realize that you're not responsible for negotiating this on either side, but you're the only person that we have coming to us from Washington, anybody from the administration or uh, either side of the aisle on this. So I am going to bring it up today because there was some disturbing news that came out earlier today. This is something from the National Air Traffic Controllers Association, along with the airline pilots and the flight attendants. They put out a statement that said, in our risk-averse industry, we cannot even calculate the level of risk currently at play nor predict the point at which the entire system will break. It is unprecedented. Air traffic controllers transportation security officers, safety inspectors, air marshals, federal law enforcement officers, FBI agents, and many other critical workers have been working without pay for over a month. Staffing in our air traffic control facilities is already at a 30-year low, and controllers are only able to maintain the system's efficiency and capacity by working overtime, including 10-hour days and six-day work weeks at many of our nation's busiest facilities. Almost 20 percent of the certified professional controllers are eligible to retire today. There are no options to keep these professionals at work without a paycheck when they can no longer afford to support their families when they elect to retire, the national airspace system will be crippled. crippled. The situation is changing at a rapid pace in an air safety system that is deteriorating by the day. Uh, that's incredibly concerning to hear. Do you worry about safety at this point? Well, I do worry about safety, and it's kind of disappointing that the air traffic controllers are calling in sick in pretty large numbers. Uh, depending on the week. Many I've of them can't afford to support their families, though. Well, remember this, they are eventually going to be paid. The president signed that into Mr. law. Mr. Secretary, but, they, but, they, but, but many of these people need, Mr. Mr. Secretary, many, many of these workers clearly need the paycheck uh, on a week-by-week -week basis. They're, they're not, sure. uh, frankly, in my shoes, nor in yours, nor right. in yours. And well, so, the, so the question is, is this battle and fight at this point in the ballgame Worth, worth it, meaning is the debate over everything else that, 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 that the administration's fighting for worth more than the, the, than the risk that's being taken on at this very moment uh, and, and the effect that it's happening, having on, on the families of these federal workers? Well, first of all, the banks and the credit union should be making credit available to them. When you think about it, these are basically government-guaranteed loans because the government has committed these folks will get their back pay once this whole thing gets settled down. So there really is not a good excuse why there really should be a liquidity crisis. Now, true, the people might have to pay a little bit of interest, but the idea that it's paycheck or zero is not a really valid idea. There's no reason why some institution wouldn't be willing to lend. And indeed, we've heard tales of some of the government. So it should be put on the private sector? The private sector needs to step up where the public sector can't? No, what I'm saying is there have been ads run by a number of the public sector credit unions, which are member organizations of the people who work in the departments. Those have announced very, very low interest rate loans to bridge people over the gap. That's the kind of cooperation between financial community and employee that really is warranted. It's a totally safe loan because at the end of the day, it's 100% government guaranteed. 